Hey guys, Chris from Drift Outfitters, and today we're going to tie the 20 incher. This is a great, really simple stone fly pattern, or it could resemble any kind of uh, swimming nymph as well. You can dead drift it, you could swing it if you wanted to, uh, depending on the circumstances there. To hop into it, what we're going to be tying on is a, uh, this is a Mustad C53S, so the long curved hook from them. You can use any kind of terrestrial hook or even a shorter shank, sort of curved grub hook if you want to have your wire option. And start the fly off. This is uh, an 015 lead wire. He's lead free, whatever your preference. And we're going to put a pretty healthy number of wraps on here. So this is, um, you know, starting in around the point of the hook and moving forward. Uh, just a couple wraps shy of the hook eye itself, so that's probably about two-thirds of the hook shank that we're covering here. And this is for weight, but then also just uh, to help build up the taper of the fly. So break those ends off. There we go. And for thread, I've got a 10 aught black Vivas here. And we'll start that just ahead of the lead wraps at the front. And then while sort of holding this lead wire in place so it doesn't move on us, Take wraps back over that lead to hold it in place, a few wraps behind, and then we'll just go over this a couple more times to make sure it's not going to move around. You could tie this fly with a bead as well if you want. And this is a size 10. You could easily do this, say, even all the way up to maybe a size 4 for a very, very large fly. Just readjust that. Uh, and then all the way down to, say, a size 12. I wouldn't really go any further down than that. Um, this is a larger fly by nature, and it's... Um, there's probably better options if you want to go to that, that very small size. So for the tail on this guy, this is going to be a couple of goose biots, so in a brown. Uh, and these are, if you haven't worked with them very before, they're just very, very stiff uh, feathers, actually, even though they don't look much like it. And what you want to do is you just sort of splay them from the bottom, grab one or two, and just peel down against the grain to grab a pair like this. And when you look at these things, they do have a curvature to them, so you want to sort of hold them so they're splayed outwards from each other, like so. You can tie these in one at a time if it's easier for you, or if you can manage to grasp them so they are splaying outwards like that. You can just tie them in at the same time. Now for length, I would go at least a half a hook shank. Bites are typically tied a little shorter than some other tailing materials. They look kind of funny if you tie them too long, um, but I like this tail to at least get noticed. So. Not super short. And you can see we've tied down well around the bend of this hook. We are going to use the bend of this hook to help with the profile of the fly again. Um, so down, you can see my threads hanging about in line with the barb of the hook. That's about where we'd like it here. Now, this tail's splayed for me pretty nicely. You can see how the tail's splayed outwards. Um, but if it's not, what you can do as well, it's kind of finicky, but if you get a wrap in around the back and then back through those bites, that'll help splay them as well. You can do that around either side. Like I say, this time they've splayed pretty nicely for me. So I'm just going to advance my thread and we're going to trim these bites just short of the lead wire back here or just in around the lead wire. And that's just going to help me even out the taper of this fly so that there isn't a big step up from the hook shank to that lead wire. Now for the rib of this fly, I've got, uh, this is, um, a medium-sized orange or brown wire. You can use copper, you can use gold, whatever you like. Just adds a little segmentation, a little bit of flash to this fly. So I'm going to advance my thread up here. And again, just in the interest of building a nicely uh, sort of tapered body, I'm just going to catch that in, not quite all the way to the front of that lead wire, but close to it. And then I'm just going to, well, pulling back on this wire to keep it positioned on the side of the hook, wrap down all the way back to the tail. So you can see how that's just in along the side of that wire there, or the, the shank rather. Once I'm down here, then we're going to grab some peacock hurl. And this is a pretty big fly, so I would say three strands of peacock hurl are appropriate. And when you grab this stuff, the tips are super fragile, so I just go ahead and I break off the top third or so of those, uh, those fibers, or you could cut them as well. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. And I just catch it in at the back here. And take wraps up, covering up those tip ends. I'm gonna grab that peacock curl, and I'm just going to loosely twist it. 
And that'll help with the, uh, the profile of the hurl as I wrap it on. I'll get a nice round kind of profile. Those hurls will also sort of uh, help to reinforce each other. So I'm just going to wrap that all the way up close to where my thread is there. Take a couple wraps off. Catch it in. So I'm, I'm shooting for about that two-thirds mark here. All right, and the, the other third is just going to be thorax. Snip off the excess. And then a rib, I'm just going to counter wrap this. So the opposite direction is my peacock curl to help reinforce it. The peacock curl is pretty brittle on its own. So I'll make about four, maybe five wraps up the body there, good and tight. And then I'm just going to wrap my thread around our wire here. Like so, so I'm wrapping backwards in the same direction that way on my thread. And now I'm just going to come around and use that to anchor my thread. So I'm wrapping the normal direction again. And I'll break off that wire. Now for the wing case on this fly, you could use turkey. I use pheasant tail just because I've got lots of it handy. I find it works well. Any sort of you know, nicely barred uh, natural feather will work well for this purpose. So you want a pretty healthy clump of this stuff, maybe, up, maybe upwards of 20 fibers or so. The wing case, I think, is a focal point of these larger stone flies. So a good, healthy clump of this stuff. I'm not too worried if these fibers separate a little bit on me. But what I want to try and do, if you look at them, is they've got sort of a slightly duller side and a slightly stronger, more colored side. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera, but I want to tie it in with the, uh, the dull side facing up here. That way, when I fold it back, I've got the more nicely colored side facing upwards. So I'll tie those down just over the top like so. Uh, and clip off the tips. You'll notice I tied that down from the tips a good bit. That's because I, I really want the widest part of the, uh, the fibers showing on this, right, to give me that bulk. So the further down you go on these barbs, the thicker they become, the more pronounced they're going to be. So I don't mind scrapping those tips. That's fine. I'm just going to come forward with my thread, build up a little bit of a taper here, just even things out. Like so, and then for the legs on this fly, we're going to use a partridge hackle. This is a good chance to use one of your slightly larger hackles that you don't use on, say, wet flies. I'll find one here. There we go. So something, you know, relatively dark, ideally, and maybe just a tad bigger than average. I'm just going to come in and strip off all this fluff down at the bottom here. So we've just got those nicely barred fibers. And then what I like to do, if you're looking at this feather, it's got a little curvature. Turn it so uh, this is my perspective, this would be yours. Uh, the feather is facing away, from, it's curving away from yourself. And we're going to strip one side of it. So we're going to be stripping the left side if you're facing the feather in this orientation. So I'm going to flip this around, strip off that left side, like so. And then I'm just going to pull down those fibers away from the tip, not stripping them off, just sort of pulling them back, easing them back so that they're out of the way. I'm going to catch that in by the tip, right back at that wing case. Let's snip off the excess. And then for the thorax itself on this fly, we're going to be using some hair's ear dubbing. So this is just a, a dark hair's ear. I'll take off, good pinch that. And you could use, you know, if you want to add a little flash to this fly, it is a pretty drab fly overall. You could definitely throw in, say, some ice dub or some, uh, some hairy ice dub or whatever. I'm going to dub on a fairly generous amount for the thorax here, trying to bulk this up a little bit. And you'll notice I'm not dubbing this very tight. I'm dubbing it pretty loosely. 
because I'd really like to take advantage of that spikiness that this dubbing has, get that into the body a little bit. So now we're just going to grab our partridge, and you'll only get a couple wraps of this stuff on, on a large-ish size like this at least. So make one, two wraps, up to the eye, tie that off, clip off the excess, like so. Now I'm going to do, so we're going to be pulling that wing case over the top, I'm just going to, from the top here, sort of push some of those fibers down around the sides to clear them out of the way, like so. And then, now that they're out of the way, I can pull this wing case forward, sort of wiggle it around to flatten it, to make it as wide as I can. And then, while pulling it tight and forward, just catch that off there. A couple good tight wraps. There we go. Trim off the waist ends there. Pull any stray fibers back. Build up a nice neat head. And whip finish. Throw on a little bit of head cement there. Just to tidy up. Make sure it's not going to come undone on us. That is your 20 inch or stonefly. Really good Great Lake steelhead fly or trout fly. Give it a shot.